I'll be covered until, hey, Facebook, hopefully everybody, look who's here. It's a Thursday morning, afternoon-ish special show. <laughs> it feels like morning all day right now. For real. If you've emailed me today for your travel needs, I am going to get it done this afternoon. I promise. I have <laughs> like a 30-minute break to record the show, but I promise I'm on it. Just I made Mike record oh. now because I have to go to the grocery store this afternoon. Nope, I don't get to eat today. I'm going to take care of everybody's cruises and Walt Disney World vacation. We're going to get we're gonna fun. Have to express. I promise. You are going to get on a bus and go to the, you're going to go to Pop Century. You're going to get on the Fantasy. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do so much cool stuff. I love helping people plan vacations. I just wish I had to go to like, you know, I, I, this quality control. You know, I just like follow them around. Like, just, <laughs> Be like, oh, wait, no, no, not, don't eat there. Don't, oh, don't get this. Snack. First, is that too hot? That might burn your mouth. Give me, you know, the bread <laughs> service. That dip may be a little tasty. So let me have first bite. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great job. Let me be your tester. Hey, if we ever go that route, Pam, if we have like an exclusive service, I call it. I first. know. I know, right? Let me lay on that bed first. Yes. Let me lay. Let me. Looks like it may be uh, the, 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 the hostess <laughs> made it so tight in that bed. I don't want you to get your circulation cut off. That's right. <laughs> Let me get in. Let me stay in here for like 45 minutes to get all warm for you. <laughs> oh, shout out to Robert. He's watching in Zambia. So over in Africa. How cool. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, and Haley's watching. Hey, Haley. Hi, Haley. How's that little sister doing? Those pictures of Haley and her sister. Oh, my goodness. Adorable. Adorable. We got to see Haley not that long ago over Thanksgiving when we were down for Thanksgiving. We saw her. And she was so, so, it was so cute. We saw her at the Polynesian from just a little bit of a fart. And she was so excited to see us. She started dancing around. And I'm like, man, I need someone to be that excited to see me every day. It felt so good. Seriously. No, you're there you go. It's another job. Have Haley follow you around every morning. Like, okay, we're going to book some travel today. <laughs> She's like your affirmation person. Yeah. Like, like, today's like, going to be a great day. <laughs> there used to be a um, commercial, like, that was, I forgot what it was for, but like a band would follow around and be like, Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> I remember that one. That. Yes. Mike, Mike, Mike. Like, I, yeah. need, I the Tiger is like our fight song at Mizzou. So, dude, that would just have me. I'd, I'd be like, I'm booking 17 trips an hour. Mike, every time I hang up from Disney, Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> every time you see Wreck It Ralph, they're like, oh. Second one yet. I got to go see it. We're waiting for Paige. She comes home today with the dog. So, we're trying to dog proof the house. Like, that's another thing we got to do today. <laughs> Nashville will be down in Memphis. Oh yeah, Julie says I would be mortified because they've been home for a couple of weeks and still have straggler suitcases. Julie, you know that you would not be eaten if you lived in my house because <laughs> nobody gets to eat dinner until the suitcases are unpacked. That's true. I, <laughs> Well, you hear about it on tomorrow's show about how that happened to Wade up in Nebraska. We talk about that on tomorrow's memory. <laughs> we didn't have any computer, so they had to improvise. Um, um, I'm feeling at this point my family needs to um, go on vacation, come home, and not pack and not unpack for like a week. It'll be the we didn't unpack diet. <laughs> that is one way to go. Abigail, you can meet Belle at uh, Enchanted Tales with Belle. That's kind of a flyby like character experience, but you can also usually get your picture and autograph in France. We answered that on, on today's show, actually. I listened to it on my run this morning. I love France. I listened to the show again. I just ran out of all my other ones, and the run was going slow, so I got a bonus show, which was ours. <laughs> I was hurting this morning, man. It took forever. <laughs> I'm almost ready. Know. It's so. okay, Julie. You, you cannot unpack. That's just my craziness. It's to inspire my family to get stuff done. They'll tell you. I am the, I don't want to say a taskmaster because that's not really how I lead, but let's just say I keep things on track here. So you do. <laughs> Haley, eat your lunch. And I'm getting ready to have my lunch, Haley. I have the same lunch every single day I have. Eat. Well, it varies. I'm out of turkey today, so it's going to be ham. But I always have a grilled ham and cheese, usually grilled turkey and cheese, but a grilled ham and cheese today. Yum. Glaze, sour cream, and cheddar chips. And wow. I have a leftover Texas Roadhouse roll, but the Mallory's upstairs. I'm sure those things are long gone. <laughs> <laughs> she saw my stuff. I have to hide it. Like, because when I come down to do a podcast for like 30 minutes, I won't even have my chips. They'll be gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Adam and Susie sent me this awesome, awesome like box of, 
it, there are these kind of chips that are big in the South. They're called uh, they're called Golden Flake. Okay, they sell them at the Alabama football games. That's that's their sponsor. And so, I got two bags of those, and I got four packs of this Jim and Nick's uh, mix for these cheddar biscuits. Which is, I it, looked that up the other day when you mentioned it. it looked fantastic. Yeah, we're we're making those on Christmas morning. My dad's coming over. Um, so anyway. She has eaten one of the whole bags of chips already. She lo- like I was like, you ate that whole bag of golden flake. Like, <laughs> so I hid the other ones. I was like, because we're keeping these for the Alabama football game on December 29th. Like, uh, if you eat these, I am gonna hurt. She's like, just go get another bag. I'm like, yeah, just go get another bag. It's an Alabama thing. She's looking for line. I'm like, no. You'll have to drive down. Yeah, I want out. Oh, I love Alabama. Hey, Jeanette told us comes home too, Julia. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, Julia's going to Spain, man. Oh, you know what though? That's what Paige did. She went to Ireland. <laughs> I'm not- All right, some of these we should answer on an actual show because they're questions we can answer and they'll make us look good. That is good. Okay. <laughs> I, I actually want to eat lunch too. Okay. And I'm joking. I'm gonna eat lunch fast and get back to work. Okay. So this is actually everybody for the day after Christmas because obviously Mondays are recording day and Monday's Christmas Eve. So we will Monday's be- Christmas Eve, yes. We're trying to get ahead. Trying to get ahead. We're going to have all kinds of stuff out of sync over the next couple of weeks because then I got marathon, so we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll do it. It'll all right. get done. Okay, this is 1425. Here we go. Let's go. Welcome to episode 1425 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel Happy Wednesday to you, and we hope that you had a wonderful, fantastic Christmas with your friends and family. Of course, the holiday season continues. You know, we have New Year's coming up here very, very soon. And for all those that are headed down for the New Year's festivities to Walt Disney World, remember when you're packing your, you know, you want to pack in layers because it could get cold down there this time of year. So lots of stuff where you can layer it up. But also the most important thing to pack. Well, okay, second most important thing, pack your shoes and your underwear. But after that, Pack your patience because it can get crazy down there. But you know what? That's what makes it awesome being at a Disney destination holidays. So uh, it's kind of the yin and yang of it. It's a little crazy. It's a lot crazy and it's a lot awesome. So uh, get ready for that. If you're headed down, I'm so jealous. I'm not going to be at uh, Epcot for New Year's Eve this year, but um, I've been there the last few and I'm going to really miss that this year. So make sure you're sharing a lot on social media. For good old Mike back in, uh, I'll be in Memphis uh, for the Mizzou football game. All right, today we're going to answer your list of questions. Joining me today, we have Pam Forrester, co-owner of the Magic for Less Travel. Merry Christmas one last time because you know what? Andrew's still listening on Christmas Day. (laughs) I'm sure. I'm sure. Merry Christmas, Andrew, and everyone else who's listening on Christmas Day. And I agree with Mike. This is the most magical time to be at the world. I know it gets crazy and whatever, but you can make fast pass. You're going to make fast pass for, you know, three things. If you did it 60 days ago, you're golden. You'll just be able to go there and enjoy all the cool holiday things. That's what you have to focus on and extend a little grace to your fellow man who is there with you and to the cast members too. Right. And hopefully they'll do the same for you. So Yes, give give peace a chance. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That should be the thing that should be stamped on everybody's hand as you enter Epcot on New Year's Eve. Just give give peace a chance. That's anyway, right. so uh, let's answer some questions today. We got a great one here to kick us off. We're gonna get to the chat room too with their questions. And this one says Epcot Dining Crisis, all caps with an exclamation point. So boom. We got to take care of Matt here. He says, hey, Mike, howdy from Texas. My family and I are planning a trip to the world in June of 2019. We're in the process of setting up our ADRs. There will be eight of us total, two of which are children. I actually have two questions. We're hoping to do a breakfast at Garden Grill on one of our days in the parks, but I'm unable to find any available ADRs for eight people during breakfast for our days there. There are available times for six or less. My question is, should we set up two different reservations for around the same time then let the cast members know that we're all together or should we book the ADR for six and then let the cast member know that we would like to add two people to our party upon arrival. All right. So that's his first question, Pam. So two strategies. What would you say is his best, uh, best uh, way to move forward on this? So you absolutely want to make two reservations for the total number of people that you have Um, showing up with more people than is on your reservation can be dicey um, because they may just tell, you no. seriously, absolutely. They may just tell, you no. they don't have room. Um, And 
even making the two reservations around the same time for your total party is a challenge, especially at Garden Grill, because their little booths and tables only fit a certain amount. Chances are you'll be sort of on the upper level um, because they're able to sometimes push some tables together. But I would make it for as many as you can. I guess six is the, is the most you can make it. And then also make it for two at the same time if you can. And then when you get there a little early and ask if they can do it. Now, they may or may not be able to. So just be prepared for that. Um, but I think making it for your larger party size is probably the best way to go with that. The garden girl is a little tricky just because the, you know, it's a run in the round that moves, you know, and so they don't have as many different ways they can, you know, no. tables. But what I would do, you know, not, I wouldn't even do six or two. I do four and four. Yeah, it. that's true. And then you'd be okay. I, so I was just thinking the six, maybe because they might already sit you up on that second level. Yeah, yeah that's I true. know it's all it's hard. It's totally hard. But yeah, um, you know, but definitely make them for around the same time and see what you can do. It, it is a struggle with Garden Grill, though, in particular, because most of the um, seating on that first level is just the booths and those won't accommodate eight. And you can't put chairs like more yeah. than they have, right? Because Chip and Dale are walking through there and Mickey's walking through there and they'd run into the chair. So you can do that at Texas Roadhouse, but you cannot do that at Garden Grill. Well, you know, and Texas Roadhouse is not open for breakfast. So That's true. And they do have dancing waitresses that are pretty bad, you know, and waiters. <laughs> but like, and I always have to sit in that row where they're dancing right in front of you. And that's so awkward because like the, <laughs> lot, the music turns up and like we go so much. I know the song that they dance to because they only dance to one song. And so when that song starts, I'm like, oh, this is so awkward because they're dancing like two feet from me. But like, really, I just want to eat my chicken critters. But do I watch? Do I applaud? Do I, what do I do? You know, like. <laughs> Do I watch the show? I mean, because it goes on, you know, they're nobody. The dancers don't want to dance. They want to serve, you know, roles and stuff. They don't want to be out there dancing, but they, they're obligated. They don't look at it. They're looking at the ceiling. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> Maybe you should have a conversation with I, them about I, it. I, I so be talk. like, what would you like from me? <laughs> Tell me. I, I, I feel awkward. This is a weird relationship we have. That's my listener question for today. What, what <laughs> do they start doing the two step anyway. And you know what? Matt's from Texas. He could probably help me out. So we could, this could be reciprocal. And he says his second question is about about beer garden you know what i have a question for you pam about beer garden in just a second too he says we're planning a late lunch at 2 10. from my understanding they switch from lunch to dinner around three or four does the restaurant actually close temporarily around that time to switch the buffet from lunch to dinner my concern is that if we eat at 2 10 will we be rushed uh, rushed to eat or will, will we have time to sit down and relax for a bit while we eat? I love listening to y'all. My rides to and from work and school. It's like taking a mini vacation, uh, mental vacation. Keep up the great work. Respectfully, Matt, he is a United States Marine Corps veteran. So thank I you. I so like much. the respectfully. That's nice. I don't know that we deserve that, Matt, but we'll take it. We do not. But uh, Matt has our respect for serving in the Marines. Sure. Thank you. That. All right. So. How's that? Because, you know, Ricky's famous for the breakfast lunch uh, uh, duo. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> what do you think of your garden for the lunch and dinner sw swap out? So it doesn't actually close if you're already in there, um, you know, during that time. None of the restaurants really do. And Disney's actually really good about not rushing you out at the close of um, one meal as it transitions into another. So you should be fine there. Don't feel rushed. And you know, if, if I ever felt rushed at a restaurant, I would say I would be more inclined to take a, more time and <laughs> even slow down more than not. I'm like, oh, you're trying to rush me out? Yeah, I see how this is. <laughs> My mom told me to chew every bite 60 That's times. Right. I don't That's right. <laughs> I'm like, you're not going to rush me out. <laughs> so anyways, but no, <laughs> they're here's, good at. Here's my question about beer garden. I've been, you know, I've had these weird cravings lately and I'll be down at uh, Marathon in two weeks going solo this time. I'm going to go to Pinocchio Village House. I don't know why I'm craving this place, but I'm going to wave at the boats for Small World and have some kind okay. of, I, I just I haven't been there in ages, but I'm really wanting to go to Beer Garden. I mean, is Beer Garden really, to me, almost in a way is a great solo place because you're seated you sit with other people. Yeah, I mean, it'd be kind of social. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, you would be seated with other people. It might be kind of awkward for the other people. They'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> by himself having that. <laughs> like okay weirdo yes you can sit with us now i'm sure i think you know that's the beauty of disney you know you're there you already have something in common with the people there you like disney at least on some level right 
<laughs> or if somebody's like there because he's got the shirt on because I'm just here to pay for the Disney vacation for everybody else, I'll be, a, I'll, I'll be a hater for 45 minutes and we'll <laughs> right. Right. I'll, I'll take on the role. I'll read it's, the house and take on the role. <laughs> it's research no matter what, right? You're finding things that like are either um, good for people when they're on vacation or horrible for people on vacation. But yes, little I would call it research. You write that baby off. That's It'll, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a fun story nonetheless anyway. So. That's right. Uh, let's get to Julie's question. She's been asking here, and I feel so bad in the live chat. Let's get to it. She says, I'm going to type my question in here just in case you get a chance. Uh, we just got back from our first visit to Walt Disney World with our son's service dog. We stayed at Fort Wilderness in a cabin, which had its advantages with the dog, but we always split stay. The second portion was at Animal Kingdom Lodge Jumbo, which we adore, but it was not ideal with the dog at all. Going back and forth on the uh, on the launch, I am now pretty sold on staying at the Contemporary Garden Wing next trip. Good call. I think that would be a, an ideal location with the service dog. There's six of us, though, plus the dog, so we need two connecting rooms. I'd request first floor. I want to know if a deluxe room can connect to a regular room. Do you know? Golly, I wish I knew that question, Julie, but I honestly do not know. And those deluxe rooms are so few and far between um, in that space. There are just not that many, but they're great. I mean, they're huge. And I know what you're saying. I would, even if the rooms didn't connect, I would sort of use that deluxe room as like the place where people gathered, you know, like in the morning, if someone's going to get breakfast, because you just have the extra space. So whether they connect it or not, like, let's just say it's down the hall. And that's the beauty of it. You only have one building. You don't even have to go outside. Even if someone was like, your other party was like a, a floor above, they only have to come down. And let's just say, Julie, I've seen people walking around on the outside with pajamas on. So I would say you can come down and get gather in the deluxe room in your pajamas and then go back and do the things that you need to do. But you know what I'm saying. I would use that as the gathering place because it's a great room layout. That's what I do too. Yeah, because the deluxe rooms, I mean, when you get those really cool rooms, you know, there's yes, they're unique and there may be five, six, seven, and they're, you know, they're, they're like usually clustered. So they're not, you know, there's, I would ask though. I mean, but I, I, I'd have to look. I'm not off the top of my head. Uh, and we, it, actually, even when you call, sometimes we can't get that information. Um, it's, it's just a challenge. They do not. Um, the Disney query system doesn't have access. To, they can't drill down that much to us. And wouldn't we all love, hello, a little layout with like, here's the rooms, here's the room types, here's how it is in the building. That mm. would be fantastic, but we don't get that either. Kind of so. like cruise, uh, cruise line. That'd be nice. So, uh, right? Like deck plans. Yeah, exactly. Deck plans for the contemporary. All right. <laughs> Becky, Becky's got a question here in the chat. Ladies trip in combination with Princess Half Marathon Weekend. Me, my mom, my aunt and my cousin Friday through Monday. I only want to do things my kids three and five wouldn't enjoy. So I don't feel that whatever, man, ride Dumbo, take a picture, send it back. They're going to have fun while you're gone too. Uh, let's see. Character meals sound great, but I'd rather save that for when my kids are with us. World showcase and keys to the kingdom planned other ideas. Thanks. Love y'all. Dick. Uh, she's down in Dixon, Tennessee. You know what? I'd say Disney Springs for sure. Cause kids aren't going to enjoy Disney Springs. And I mean, Girls trip, princess weekend, shopping, eating, you know, uh, bowling, maybe. Uh, there's all kinds of fun stuff to do, Disney Springs. I agree. I, I agree. There's just, it's become such a good destination. And I know the complaint about Disney Springs right now is that some people, and I don't hear this often, but every now and then they're like, it's like my local mall. And I get that, that there are stores that you might find at your local mall, but it's such a themed experience. I mean, I think from start to finish, when we were down there last, we just walked around and admired all the different decorations. And they were different with each section of Disney Springs. I thought that was really cool, too. Whether you were in the landing or the other spots, they, they all changed. So that was great. But there's so many great places to eat and drink and just enjoy. And I think Splitsville, when they added that years ago, that was a great addition because it actually gave you like a destination, something you could do. And the food there is good, too. So um, I agree with that. And just the shopping in itself, the different Disney shops, the different regular shops. It was just it's just a good time. What about to Ryan in the chat offers up, you know, do something like a California grill meal or a Hana Narcusis, you know, celebrate in style. And again, 
this I think this would be a great opportunity with it being an, an adults trip. Really focus on maybe doing one or two signature meals because you probably don't want to have three and five year olds. You know, I mean, you don't do signature meals with them. Right. No, I agree. That's, I mean, that's a great, and there's, there are great signature meals. And I know that sometimes, um, you know, I think people don't take advantage of that because they want to be in the parks and the parks and the parks. And I get that too. You want to get your money's worth, but at the same time, I think sometimes the money's worth or the value in the trip come from things, not just in the park, but outside the park. If you're focusing so much on getting your monies out of the park out of your park ticket you're forgetting that you're on vacation and doing things like enjoying a great meal together or something like that and you know what we are going to have an upcoming show about value versus cost i okay. love that versus price because mallory's cheerleading squad is going down for um cheerleading championships in in may okay so of course you know there's like a whole bunch of them They've her gym's been apparently before the last few years. And so they've gone down and this is our first time with this, with this gym, you know, so they qualified earlier this year, they're going down. Well, you know, everybody's got to pay for flights and, you know, I mean, it, it does add up and, you know, a lot of people are complaining about it, but the thing is, we'll talk about what they're doing. It's there's, it's one of those things. They're being penny wise and pound foolish um, yeah. by hotel choice. And, some of the options they're making they're saving maybe a hundred dollars total for the whole three or four days but the experience is going to be poor because of some of the choices the value is not good the mm -hmm. cost is a little less but the but in the end it's going to cost more i can tell i could go down 17 reasons why it's going to cost more for a lesser experience but we'll talk about that on a future show not today so i but if value is so i had this discussion with pam she was getting fired up like they're just doing the best they can i'm like no value value not <laughs> It's true because you can't always look at the bottom line because I mean like the way it's going to happen. We won't have magical express. Okay. Now we're trying to get to the hotel, you know, stay in Disney Springs. You know I mean? We're not getting this, you know, you don't have a food court. You don't, yeah, it's, it's value. I know it's true. I agree. You know that that's my mantra all the time. I mean, we absolutely want to work within a guest budget, but my thing I always say is if someone told, if someone didn't tell me that I could stay at a moderate for like X number of dollars more when comparing. And as a travel agent, I'm not doing that to upsell someone. I'm doing that to be like, here's the information you decide what you decide is your vacation. It's fine with me either way. But if someone didn't tell me that like I could do a park hopper for like $200 more for my family, I'd be mad about that, right? Because I think that that's such a great value in that space. So anyways, uh, just little things like that, I think are something you absolutely have to think about. All right, let's head back to the inbox here, kind of bouncing back and forth. It's coming from Australia, annual pass or not. It's from Peter. Hey, Mike, love listening to the pod. It's great company on my long commutes during the work week. I still love that you listen down in Australia. That is amazing. Uh, he says, we're a long way out. However, beginning to plan a big visit coming from Australia in 2020. We're hoping to stay for around 12 to 14 nights split between budget permitting the Polynesian and the contemporary. I have two questions for starters. I hope you can help me with one. If we decide to stay for 14 nights, can we get park passes that will cover us for that period of time? Or two, would it actually be cheaper to buy annual passes? I'm sure that the cost will be higher. However, do you think that the discounts, et cetera, will make it worthwhile? If I can slip in another sneaky question, we're thinking of coming in sometime around March or April. Any events to be wary of? And how do you think the new Star Wars land might affect things? Thanks in advance and have a happy new year. Cheers, Pete. All right. So I think this is kind of a, you know, we have a very, you know, we have an audience that's very wide, you know, all around the, the planet, lots of UK listeners, Australia, you know, everywhere. So what, what advice do you give international folks? Cause they tend to come. I mean, if you're coming from the other side of the planet, you're not going to do a, a long weekend. You're going to stay for, you know, a couple of weeks typically. So what do you say, Pam? It really, really depends on so many factors. But I think one of the things you have to look at is there used to be this advice floating out there that if you're eight days or more, um, that's definitely annual pass. That advice is actually a little outdated because the annual passes have increased the past couple of years significantly. So um, I think the factor is a little more than that. You need more days than that. And one of the things you also have to take into consideration is that Disney releases their discounts for packages 
um, earlier than they do for like annual pass discounts. Any annual pass discount on a room is going to be like the clearance sale. It's going to be what's left over. So that's something you absolutely want to take advantage of, especially when you have two hotels kind of in mind that could book up during that time. So by the time it comes to annual pass discounts, there may not be some available. Now, the longest park days you can you can choose is um, you know something you want to consider that because in US in the US there's sort of a limit on that you can buy a 10 day but the good news is you can buy a 10 day with water parks and more or whatever they're calling it this week I, I don't I'm like not even attempting to make this plus one. baby thank you, thank you I'm not even attempting to learn the new lingo I'm so tired of it. <laughs> So anyways, buy it with the water parks and that extends that 10 day into a much longer ticket because your water park entrance days do not pull from the days that you have um, to go into the parks. So consider that too. I think that that's a big bonus, especially when you're going to be there for a long period of time. Having some days where you don't go into the parks is a good thing, right? Stay at your resort, especially at the two resorts you chose. You're going to want to spend a day by the pool there at the Polynesian. Um, it's just a great pool setup. Spending days at the water parks, that's a good um, thing to do too. And I think it just gives you a little bit of flexibility. Now, the other thing I will say too is if you're really set on buying an annual pass, one of the things you can do to go ahead and book and take advantage of those discounts that come out with packages is buy a package with the ticket that has the longest number of days. And when you're there, you can upgrade to an annual pass. So that's what I would say that if I, if this was me in his situation, I'd buy the package with the 10 day park hopper plus if you're going to use, well, if you get the park hopper plus, you got to upgrade to the annual pass with the water parks. Depends if you're going to use that or not. I get a park hopper, you know, maybe not the plus if you're going to upgrade and then make that choice later, but then upgrade it during your stay. You'll have enough days. You'll be covered. Um, every time you mention, I started laughing when you talked about the Polynesian pool. Cause I was like, pictures, uh, Steve's belly flop into the Polynesian pool. Like I can never, I'll never picture that pool without the, the, the um, he got Yahtzee apparently. That's right. That is a rule. So if you're coming from Australia and you hit Yahtzee while you're playing poolside, boom, you have to belly flop into the pool. It's a, <laughs> but it's a great example of enjoying stuff outside the parks. One day we were by the Polynesian pool and we were playing Yahtzee. Oh, it's one of the best days too. Really? It was. I mean, it was. We, we weren't running around sitting there. No. We had a great day. It was a pretty good day. So, but um, that was fun. And it's not like something you can do at home. Not like that. So anyways, um, yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> we're starting to learn how to do Disney, right? You know, we're figuring it out here after a few trips. Agreed. <laughs> Not always uh, to the guidebooks. Let me just say too, um, he's also asking about crowds. Of course, we don't know how that's going to go, but if I had to guess with Galaxy's Edge coming online sometime late 2019, I would imagine that spring break 2020 is going to be hopping. I'm just saying, I mean, Pam, I mean, I, I would expect that this is probably going to be the, the most crowded the resort will be in a decade, if I had to guess. Um, the one truth we will know is that DHS will never be called a half day park again. No, no, well, uh, it'll be a half day before you can actually see it. When you get off the plane, to get into the park. <laughs> it will be really interesting. And I think even Slinky Dog has made it so that, you know, it really is kind of filling up that time. Now, if we could just get a couple restaurants where you could actually eat at, we'd be golden. <laughs> so anyways. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head back to the chat. Greg's got a question here. He says, hey, gang, looking forward to my marathon weekend trip and staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge Jumbo for the first time. I have a question about Amazon Prime now. Do I need to present? Uh, do I need to be present? <laughs> I can read to pick up the order or can I leave a comment to leave the items with Bell Services and then pick everything up later? What is the best move? Thanks so much and happy holidays, Greg. Okay, so Greg, let me ask uh, Again, your mileage may vary with these kind of things because it's all about how the package is accepted at the resort. I've done this many times and it's gone different ways. Coronado Springs, my stuff always ends up at the business center. And then I got to pay like 15 bucks to get it out of jail, you know, because they have a business center. That's how it works. It was like, oh, I think that happened at Boardwalk too. And then you got to walk like seven miles to get it over at the business center there too. And I had all kinds of crap. Was, I had all kinds of stuff. Uh, like that was, the, that was the time I had all the sweats and everything for Marathon Weekend. But 
Animal Kingdom Lodge doesn't have a business center. That's good. You're not going to have to pay the extra money. What's going to happen is, at least with Amazon Prime, now I'm not talking Prime now, the like 90-minute thing or one-hour thing, but with regular Prime, I order my stuff about four to five days prior to the trip. I fill in the address of the resort. I just Google it, and it'll tell you. And I put care of Mike Rallman, guest at Animal Kingdom Lodge. And I put the dates I'll be there. And then what happens is Bell Services, anybody that receives that package at Animal Kingdom Lodge, it isn't hard for them to figure out, oh, this is a guest that's going to be here from January 8th to the 12th. Okay, I'll throw that. And then they throw it off to the side. You go down Bell Services, tip them and get your stuff. With Prime Now, they do the kind of the same thing because I don't think I've ever, I mean, because they deliver to the front of the resort. I don't think I've ever been there to pick it up myself from the driver. I think they leave it to Bell Services too. They get the same thing. That's what has happened to us. But here's the difference. So the stuff that I've ordered from Prime, just regular Prime using stuff shipped to the resort, not Prime Now, we've had to pay the package on just about everything now. On Prime Now, we have not had to pay the fee because it's something that does go to Bell Services. Um, but the, the beauty of Prime Now is you know right when the guy's there. So we have gone down, and I think we've gone down – within minutes of when it was delivered or when we saw it was going to be delivered just so we could pick it up and bell services didn't have to worry about putting it away. But I believe the prime, the prime packages go through the regular mail center, which is sort of in a holding area, which is why sometimes you'll see like, you know, with Amazon, you get updates like um, here it is. We dropped it off at your house and here's a picture of it. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? So, um, so things are a little delayed at Disney. Like you typically like things got delivered yesterday and then they call me and say, Oh, we have it. If it's a regular package, but prime now they're really good about um, letting you know, you just got to um, tip everyone accordingly for that. So with Prime now, the tip's actually right in the app when you order. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It is. You're right. That, I like that. I wish everything was like that. I know. Because, you know, everybody needs it. I, in the service industry, you should always have a gratuity. And, uh, you know, that, that makes it so much easier when Uber made the tip in the app. That was great because I just never have cash. It's not that I don't want to tip. It's just that, you know, it's hard to keep track of all that. I know. I agree. They allow you now an Uber to tip. Um, they finally, didn't used finally. to. I know. Finally, right? So... All right, so uh, don't forget to uh, order your throwaway sweats on Amazon. Use our link, and then everybody's happy. You're warm. We're happy. You're happy. Everybody wins. Okay, so William's got a question. I think it's a good one, even though the Christmas parties are now behind us. So we want to have those hard ticket events too much here again until, oh, you know, say uh, August when the Halloween parties start again. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, I know. It's crazy to think about that, right? He's nuts. But he's saying with Christmas parties being three to four times a week, does the Magic Kingdom on a party day make more sense? At one park on a recent or one point on a recent trip, Small World was 55 minutes. They were on a non-party day. So what do you, this is kind of a philosophy, philosophical thing, you know? So you can go to the Magic Kingdom on a party day, which means you're going to get booted out at six. So you're not getting as many hours, but some people might tend not to go to the Magic Kingdom because you're not getting the nighttime hours that day. Or Everybody that's not going on those days is going to the Magic Kingdom on the days where there isn't a party. So it's like a philosophical thing. What do you say, Pam, to that? I know, right? It's like um, Schrodinger's cat or one of those little things, right? <laughs> if, if you go to the party, if you go to the Magic Kingdom on a party day. Now, so I think um, if that's what works into your schedule better, first of all, because there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't want to go to the Magic Kingdom on a party day, even though that's really the day they want to go. First of all, I, for me, that's a no-brainer. Absolutely go ahead and go anyways. Because like you said, Mike, there are people who don't have park hoppers. So when they, at six o'clock, they're going to be done for the day visiting any park. And so they'll avoid the Magic Kingdom because of that. I have found lately that these days that the party is, is taking place, Magic Kingdom does feel a little less busy until that like four o'clock time when the party folks start coming in. But I felt like it's a little less busy during that time. Um, and we've really enjoyed that. So consider that um, they will really boot you out at six. It's so funny. Um, I watched when we were doing the party this year specifically as to how they were doing it. First of all, they have about 
a hundred different checkpoints where you have to show your wristband to get through. And if you don't have your wristband, they sort of shoo you politely out. I mean, they do it politely, but whatever. To get on any attraction, you have to show your wristband. Um, and to, to access like any of the cookies or things like that, you have to show your wristband. But they really do sort of make a sweep and sort of push people out. And it's kind of an interesting process to watch. But yeah, um, they will they will kind of usher you out at six. Um, but I would still, I would not avoid it. Be there when the park opens, go and enjoy. Um, that's really, you know, when you think about it, nine to six is a full day at the park. So. Yeah. Because, I mean, you could turn that into a Disney Springs evening, a night by the yep. pool, even though it's, you know, it's cool. You can still swim even in the, you know, Christmas time down in Florida. Most nights, not every night, but, you know, most nights or what have you. But, again, that's the beauty of the park hopper, too, you know, because mm -hmm. then, you know, just bail out of there at 4 o'clock and you could go over to Epcot and see Illuminations and do World Showcase. I mean, I, right. I, like, I like to consider World Showcase is a great place to land as well as Disney Springs when you're kind of, behind the crowds you know what i'm saying like a lot of parks you want to get there rope drop and be ahead of the crowds because you're queuing up for a lot of stuff well world showcase if you're just there to take in the exhibits see you know impressions de france or the you know ride the boat ride in mexico have a margarita get a meal snack around that's great because who cares if you get there at five or six o'clock in the evening you're not queuing up for anything you're not behind no. it it's perfect. And then the other thing you can do, especially at that time of year, schedule a candlelight processional um, dining package. Then you're seeing, you're going to be able to have a great meal and then see the candlelight processional with a much smaller weight and boom, your evening set. See uh, holiday illuminations. I'd call that a full day. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jody Sprinkles had a question here in the chat. I'm sorry I missed it earlier. So let's get to this. But I mean, I, you know, we're, we're doing the show with Pam, so there's really no point in asking this question, but we will anyway. She says, hey, guys, which would you choose for atmosphere? Sorry, sorry, not atmosphere. Which would you choose for a monorail resort dinner? California Grill or Ohana? Going in <laughs> September and already thinking food. Okay, so Pam, why would you pick um, <laughs> What? You didn't even let me answer. Maybe I was going to no, choose. I, I didn't even ask it earlier. <laughs> like, well, yeah, you know, so. No. So if you're looking for a good meal, a, an adult meal, a it's they're really different experiences one sort of an all a more all you can eat family style meal and not so hana you're going to meet your cousins you're going to have lots of meat showing up at your table um hello one of my favorite things at ohana is the salad and the noodles i mean the everything sides, else is good <laughs> the sides are super good they're under like everybody talks about the meats but the sides are kind of a, yes. a hot take that's a hot take you go to ohana for the sides <laughs> So that, but California Grill is a more signature dining experience. And the beauty of it is you also have a great spot for the fireworks. Um, we have had, you know, some really great experiences at California Grill. Even if you aren't seated by the window, you absolutely can go out on the catwalk, watch the fireworks. It's really a unique view. You get sort of a Space Mountain um, central sort of view of the fireworks. It's kind of a cool thing. You absolutely can see the castle too. And you can hear the show. Now you're not going to be able to see the projections. But for me, if I'm, you know, looking for an evening that I really want to be an event, I'm going to do the California Grill. So. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a Ohana guy because you're talking unlimited food. I mean, and I love the Polynesian, man. You put me, I am ready to move in with George. I love Polynesian. I want to be somewhere in Polynesia. Fiji, put me on Survivor. I don't care. Whatever. I just love that. <laughs> Too so, funny. All right. Next question is from Jennifer Marietta Greenwood. She says, uh, would you recommend up a great bird adventure or festival of the lion king for our last fast pass at animal kingdom we have three kids they're three five and six and can't get cali river rapids but did get flight of passage and they'll do rider swap of course and the safari fast pass thanks for any advice jennifer okay first of all you dodged a bullet with cali river rapids <laughs> right just drenched uh, i know it depends on the time of year but i mean in <laughs> july maybe but the, i just i hate being soaked i don't mind getting wet like on splash mountain but i don't want to like you know I, i'm not gonna like hey there's a pool i'm gonna jump in it with my clothes and now i'm gonna walk around for the next eight <laughs> hours in these wet sneakers and clothes i know right i mean i guess it used to be but it's not so for me if i had the choice between and i have i still you know this is a bad this is so bad giving advice like this because i've never seen uh, the, the bird show ever at Animal Kingdom, you know, before it was up or before. What? 
I, I, I know it's one of the few things I've never done. I, told, I was talking to Ricky about that, but I consider, and so does my wife, Festival of the Lion King, one of the most underrated and one of the best shows anywhere on property. So I, I think if you can get Festival of the Lion King, that's pretty sweet. You can probably get it up too. I agree. I totally agree. I think you'll be able to walk into um, the up show um, during that time. Up show, that sounds like some kind of bodily function. <laughs> I up showed. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, um, I I think absolutely you want to do Festival of the Lion King. Um, that's a show that does get busy and having the fast pass allows you not to spend so much time waiting in line to get in. Um, and then I would absolutely make sure that you um, catch the bird show. I think you'll be able to walk in during a time that fits your needs and make sure you do Finding Nemo too, because I think that's another great show over at Animal Kingdom. So. Tough one for the dads, man. That gets you right here. Is that it? No. it does. It does. It starts off a little sad, but then it picks up from there. It does. <laughs> William, I, I love recording these live and, and folks that join us live in our Facebook chats and we do these because William says, saw the new bird show and it was awesome. Birds were amazing and they brought up different holidays. And if you have an up fanatic, Doug and Russell are there. So they love are. Doug and Russell. But I did say, I told Ricky, we were talking about this on a previous podcast, that if they had a parrot that rode a bicycle on a tightrope, I would be there. Now, see, they do that at Grant's Farm here in St. Louis, like the Bush family that, you know, Anheuser-Busch, the yes. beer, beer barons, they have this, This it's kind of like a big zoo, but it's a it's, it's their house, but they have all kinds of crazy, you know, they have animals, they have elephants and stuff, and it's like a zoo, you can go there for free. They have free beer samples, you'd love it, Pam, we'll have to take Steve there sometime. But uh, yeah, so one of the things growing up, they had a bird show. They have an elephant show. They have a seal show. But yeah, the bird show, I, I still remember from my childhood, this little parrot came out and got on this little bicycle and rode across his tightrope. And I said, you have that down there? And I'm at the show every time. <laughs> so that's what it takes, parrots on a bicycle. Parrot on a bicycle, on a tightrope. I mean, three okay. things. All right. right. Well, well, we'll take you to see the up show at some point and see how uh, see how it goes. All right. Okay. Last question of the day. None too soon from Logan. Hey, BOGP crew. My husband and I have a five day split stay coming up in February, staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge and Yacht Club. Nice. I just found out that I'll be in Florida at work, uh, uh, at work trip for the three days immediately preceding our trip. Rather than trekking back up north, I've decided to head straight over to Orlando and beat my husband there by one night. My biggest question is, where do I stay this extra night? I'll be getting in Wednesday, and then my husband won't be getting in until 6 p.m. Thursday night. On Thursday, I'll be alone and without a park ticket, so looking for a resort with great amenities like lounge dining, areas to walk around, and even a spa, solo activities, or one near Disney Springs. Right now, I'm in between Wilderness Lodge, Grand Floridian, or French Quarter. Where would you all pick from this list, or is there another resort I should check out for my bonus night? One final question. Our trip overlaps with my husband's birthday. Do you have any uh, experience or tips for ordering custom cakes to be delivered at a restaurant? We're doing Rose and Crown, his birthday night. Thank you so much, Louisa. All right. So I like that bonus night, man. That is, there's nothing like that. It's like, it's like you're playing with house money. Where do I want to stay? I, the, the whole world's in front of me. But it sounds like she's narrowed it down to Wilderness Lodge, the Grand or French Quarter. Again, she's looking for solo lounge dining which you're not going to have at French quarter. That's not a great, you know, you got a food court, but that's really about it. But you could take a boat to Disney Springs mm -hmm. uh, spa. You're, you're not going to have that at uh, any of them except the grand. I don't know, Pam, where would you go with this bonus night? Gosh, I think they all have pluses, you know, with French quarter, you can go ahead and take the boat over to Disney Springs. I see that as a plus yep. the wilderness lodge though, just has a great feel to it. Um, you'd get to do Territory Lounge or Geyser Point or yeah. Roaring Fork for that matter. So you really have three choices that would sort of be easy for you to dine at. Um, you can take the boat over to Fort Wilderness, which, you know, you could do a little walking around there, um, see that area if you wanted to. The Grand Floridian is going to have um, the spa 
atmosphere for you. It absolutely will have lounge eating. You can um, grab something at Misner's. There's also a bar at Narcusi's um, that sometimes you can just uh, walk up to and sit at and grab something to eat if you want to do that. It's not lounge food. It's actually their actual menu there. So consider that Citrico's has the same kind of thing. Um, you can do that there. And from there, you could take the bus over to Disney Springs. And that would be the same case over at the Wilderness Lodge. Take the bus over. But the other thing you could do at the Grand Floridian is you're on the monorail loop. So that opens up sort of a whole new world, if you will, in that space. And you can walk to the Polynesian. There's actually a really nice path that goes from the Grand Floridian to the Polynesian. So that would open up that as well. And I love walking around the Polynesian at night. There's just something about that, the tiki torches and all of that. So um, I, we didn't help at all, I don't think, but I hope we outlined some pros of the ones that you were considering. Yeah, Robert kind of echoes what you said about Wilderness Lodge. You know, you got the great pool, Geyser Point. You have the... Uh, Territory Lounge. If it were me, I would just, here's what I would say. I'm going to give you a definite answer of what I would do. I would go Grand Floridian because for one thing, it's one night. Grand Floridian's not cheap, but you know, one night is something that you can usually swing. It's a bonus night and you're, it's hitting everything you need. It has lounge dining. It has a spa. It's got solo activities. You know, you can hear the orchestra play and it's just, uh, like I said, monorails right there. You got a lot of options. So I would do the Grand for one night and then your husband will be jealous. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right? Pop <laughs> and pop century? No, um, well, kind of. Grand Fork. <laughs> yes, I'm staying another night. Yeah, exactly. Leave it at that. There. Exactly. I'm just. I'm getting there. I'm going to rough it. You know, I'm, I'm roughing it by staying in the outer buildings. That's <laughs> <Not> right. <laughs> <laughs> pretty rough. All right. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for the questions. Thanks to everybody who joined us live in the Facebook chat. We love that very, very much. Uh, sending those questions again to Mike at BeOurGuestPodcast.com, and we'll get to those right away. And don't forget, today's episode brought to you by our friends over at VirtualMickey.com, home of great iPhone apps for you know those new devices you probably got over Christmas. You probably got a shiny one, and you're playing with it. So uh, grab Theme Park News Disney Edition. It's a free app that keeps you up to date with all the Disney news, the Disney movies, theme parks, uh, anything that you know. If you're listening to this podcast, it's a great way to uh, to have that right in front of you as you eat your cereal or, you know, hey, we're eating Christmas cookies still for the next uh, two or three weeks at least for breakfast. But who cares? You know what? It's a great thing to eat or eat. You don't want to eat the app. You want to eat the cookie. It's a good thing to read while you're eating your Christmas, whatever. So just go to go to virtualmickey.com. Check out all the great apps. They'll turn your Apple device into a Disney device right now. Again, virtualmickey.com. And again, you know, Amazon's probably having some great deals today. It's post Christmas. Everybody has great deals the day after Christmas. So uh, check them out and use our Amazon affiliate link. It's brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. And give us a follow on the social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at Be Our Guest Pod and at Be Our Guest Mike. And drop by the Facebook group at facebook.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. All right, it's time to get out of here. But hey, we have a great show already recorded for your Friday. We are going to be taking your calls. We got lots and lots of calls. It's a marathon weekend preview show. We talk about what to expect at the expo, where to meet before the races, talk about the courses a little bit, uh, you know, events that are going to be happening surrounding marathon weekend. Just we, everybody called them with lots of questions, encouragement. So for those folks that are running, and even if you're not running marathon weekend, even if you're not a big run Disney fan, you can get in there because we talk about resorts you know there's it's not just all run disney I, i'm not you know it's, it's geared toward the lizards we give one show to get everybody excited for marathon weekend but i think you'll like it as well because you get to hear some of the the voices of the folks you've probably seen posting on social media it's just a fun podcast so friday is going to be a little different but uh i really do hope you enjoy the show all right so for pam and ricky i'm mike wishing you a great wednesday time to head back to work for some maybe not all but uh hey we'll see you real soon Good. Boom. Yep. Somebody knows we are banking. We're Mike bankheading episodes. That's a good one. <laughs> I like that. We are that's Mike. Funny. That's what the Friday show was. It was my. It was a Mike bankheading. Now, you didn't hear the live. Have you heard the live call in about the holiday traditions that goes live tomorrow? No. Okay. So you got to listen to it because Mike calls in. He calls in both shows, the marathon one too. But tomorrow is just people talking about their holiday traditions. Love that. It's it starts off slow because nobody called for like the first 20 minutes. So I'm like sweating bullets. Like 
because I did it on Sunday during all the football games, like the Steelers were playing the Patriots. So yeah, that was a bad time. I was ridiculous to do that game. I wasn't thinking. So um, anyway, I gotta save this real quick. One, two, five. Uh, edited. So anyway, like I'm not getting calls for like the first 20 minutes. So I'm like, there's a deer in headlights. Like 407, 413, 9395. Give us a call. Give us a call. Give us a call. Nobody calls. Nobody calls. So finally the calls start coming in towards like after about 20 minutes. But Mike Bankhead calls in and talks about A, how he got a bazooka for Christmas. He was always the first one up. Bazooka. Bazooka. Started shooting up the, the living room with it at three in the morning because he got up before everybody else in the family. And then his his grandparents lived next door. They would wake them up. And they always got fireworks for Christmas. See, it wasn't a thing in St. Louis. We don't get fireworks for Christmas. But apparently they do in South Carolina. So anyway, he talks about how, because uh, I'm always like, well, what's a Christmas tradition you have? They would throw the firecrackers, you know, the really loud ones, not like bottle rockets, but the ones you just light and yes. throw those on his grandparents' carport to wake them up to tell them they could come over for Christmas. Everybody's awake now. I mean, I'm like, this is why I love doing these shows, man, because I had no idea that was a thing. And I can't just let's bring it back. Let's yeah. bring it back. <laughs> We're gonna keep doing these, man. That is gonna be too fun. So uh, yeah, that's gonna well, be yes, we'll call it a bankhead. We're bankheading Christmas morning. Absolutely. Well, Merry Christmas to everybody. You Merry know, Christmas, we'll everybody next week. So have a very Merry Christmas. We'll talk to you before 2019 gets in all that stuff so uh you guys keep up with us on social media we'll be posting and, and talking to you about uh merry christmas pam merry christmas mike i'm excited ornament on my tree which is a sneaker which i really appreciate it so thank you for that You're very Bye. welcome and i'm glad it's 2018 because i did complete the dopey well that's what i didn't i know that you don't i don't you don't jinx things so. exactly. that's the first thing i looked at i was like Oh, it says 2018. It's all good. I like, know. 2019, I'll probably get hit by a car before a marathon weekend. So that's the first thing I looked at. We think a lot alike. I was like, oh, God, please. <laughs> it's like, but you have to buy the, like, I did it shirts, and that is the worst thing. They should have those at the finish line. That's so stupid. <laughs> they I should buy get... those, actually. I, you I'm, should be I'm... able to reserve one. They should give yeah, it to you with your medal. Absolutely. Anyway, we'll tell everybody we said Merry Christmas and have a good one. All right. One. Okay, all right. we'll see you. Bye, everybody.